Proverbs 23, verse 21. The Bible says, For the drunkard and the glutton shall come to poverty, and drowsiness shall clothe a man with rags. Now, there's a good Thanksgiving verse, isn't it? Let me read it again. For the drunkard and the glutton shall come to poverty, and drowsiness shall clothe a man with rags. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Thank you for the good testimonies. Our hearts have been uplifted and blessed. Lord, you said, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. And Lord, I know everyone in here could have stood and said what they were grateful for, and they could have blessed your name. Lord, you've been good to our church, and we're thankful for these thy people. Now bless those working with the children on the other side. Now bless us for the next few minutes from the word of God. May we hide it in our heart that we might not sin against thee. Help us, Lord. We'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. In this verse, well, Solomon is inspired to pin this down. We find three individuals whose indulges indulgences wreck their lives notice first of all the lush it says for the drunkard shall come to poverty we don't have to spend much time there there's been a whole lot of homes wrecked because of booze been a lot of families be, that's been destroyed because the father rather than bring the paycheck home to buy groceries he spends it at the local tavern or the local bar and can I say that mm, the devil never shows the end results to when folks uh, thinking they're having a good time. The devil never shows uh, what will happen to a family when you start heading down that road. The resentment the children will grow up with for their, against their father. Never show the, uh, the havoc that intoxicating beverages will have on your body. That's why they do call them intoxicating. They are poisonous. Never show them the cirrhosis of the liver. Never show them all the health problems that can come. Never see all of that. But the Bible says the drunkard shall come to poverty. We see the lush. We see the lustful. Notice what it says. The glutton shall come to poverty. And can I say that uh, another word that is fitting for glutton is one full of greed. They never are satisfied. No matter how much they have, it seems like they want more, more, and more. Now, most of the time, gluttony is used toward uh, folks that eat. They don't know when to stop, and they just eat and eat and eat, make themselves sick. But it really transcends all forms of greed. And there are folks that are lustful. They can never attain enough or have enough and be satisfied. Can I say, in their quest for greed, they're brought to poverty. And then the Bible mentions those that are lazy. It said, drowsiness shall clothe a man with rags. Now, we're living in a day and age where we've raised two generations of the most lazy people it's ever been in America. Hmm? I was talking with Miss Nett today. Uh, America is now reaping what she has sowed. You know, uh, for the last 20 years, uh, companies have figured the best way to make their bottom line look better is they'll get rid of all their older employees, which uh, 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 hurts their benefit packages and spikes their premiums paying out for their benefits. And then with the retirement they're going to have to pay out, they'll just do away with all that, get rid of the older workers uh, and replace them with younger, less expensive, don't have to pay as big a salary. Now they're starting to reap what they've sowed uh, because now this younger generation don't want to work at all. They'll show up about half the time and they'll give you about half a day's labor for the wages you're paying them. We've raised a lazy generation. My day, you got out and worked. You get out and mow the grass. That was uh, one of our jobs. You took the trash out. 
you worked around the house till you got big enough to get, to get a job and then you, you went to work and you was constantly expected to do something. You didn't lay around on the couch and watch TV. And by the way, the only thing on TV was soap operas. Who in the world wanted to do that all day long? Uh, 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 we'd run the streets, man. We'd, we'd wear our bicycles out. Uh, uh, we'd play ball. We'd find something outside to do. Uh, 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 we'd find a possum, throw rocks at it. We'd do something. Uh, 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 but hey, this uh, generation today, all they want to do is play video games, uh, uh, put their face in front of a screen. Uh, you say, well, that's what they're into because that's all the parents have let them be into because it keeps them out of the parents' hair so the parents can do whatever they want to do. But we've raised a generation, two generations, no work ethic. Don't want to work. They want everything mom and dad has worked 40 years for. They want it instantly. Don't want to have to work for it. Uh, don't understand that uh, uh, money don't grow on trees. Uh, 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 you see, they think that because every time they whine, mom and dad throw $20 bills at them. Uh, instead of saying, why don't you clean this up? Why don't you do this? Uh, why don't you do that? And I'll give you some money for doing that. Now we just throw them, get them quit whining. Hmm? Huh? Listen, it's destroyed America. Mm -mm. they're paying kids to 15 year olds at McDonald's 13, 14, 15 dollars an hour just come work at McDonald's because you can't get workers mm -mm. and you go to McDonald's and the service you get is absolutely ridiculous you know the best time to go to McDonald's in the mornings because you got the uh, uh, senior citizens can't live on social security anymore so they're working extra hours at McDonald's they give you good service mm -hmm. There's an older black lady who works at this McDonald's down here on 42. She is a joy. She'll tell you, have a blessed day. The Lord's good. She'll tell you all kinds of good things. She'll uplift your spirit. Go down there and see her in the morning. You go at night, you're going to get some uh, 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 freak with three different shaded colors of hair. Uh, 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 got 14 different piercings on their face uh, and throws their food at you and, and ho hopes that you enjoy it because uh, don't say anything because you take it back, they're going to spit on it. Huh? That's what we've got into in America. Brother Ray's had that person look at him. He's going around talking about it. Uh, it's because they've got, we, we've got a lazy generation. Here's the end result, lazy folks. Turn out to be living in rags. Can I say it's filtered into the church? Folks have gotten lazy in church. They don't read their Bible. They don't pray. Don't seek the Lord. You blow in here and you expect the pastor to have all the spirituality you need. Well, the pastor's spirituality is what he does between him and the Lord. If you're going to get spiritual, it's going to come down to what you do with you and the Lord. He, the pastor, let me help you. Some pastor don't have enough to spare. You better get your own. Huh? Um, but I, I'm not interested in that. I'm interested in that glutton. America for too long has been gluttonous, been greedy. Can I say America's been gluttonous for prosperity? And can I say God has blessed America? We are the most prosperous nation on the earth. But can I say that's about to change? Hmm? I've said it for years and people think, oh, that's just Brother Doug popping off. But listen, America will not buy into a one world government and be part of the economic system the Antichrist is going to set up unless America's broke. And America's broke, but America don't know it. No sitting president has seen the gold in Fort Knox since Reagan. Figure it out. That's 40 years. There's not been an audit of the gold in Fort Knox since 1971. All I'm here to tell you is when Obama was president, we sent some gold bars from Fort Knox to China to pay off some of the debt we owed in China, and uh, it was lead painted gold. That didn't make the headlines like a lot of things that don't make the headlines. What I'm trying to say is America's broke. And if China calls in the debt from America right now, we'll all be speaking Chinese in about three years. Hmm? I say America's broke. If the credit card companies called in the debt on Americans, 
Americans would be broke. Mm -mm. Now, I know this is real popular, but we've been so gluttonous for prosperity that we don't work for it anymore. We just throw down some plastic and get it. What happens when they start calling in the notes? You see, what has happened is we've got generations now who don't remember the stories of the Great Depression. Some of you remember your grandparents talking about it. Hmm? My grandpa, Aunt Lynn's uh, 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 father, didn't see his first birthday cake till he was 11 years old, and that's because he walked by a house and saw a little girl had one blown out the candles on it. Uh, I can remember my grandparents talking about if they got a piece of fruit for Christmas, that was a big deal. Hmm? Now we bankrupt ourselves all year long to pay for Christmas so we can give all of our lazy kids more than they can ever imagine or play with, and then they're unappreciative when they get it because it's the wrong color or the wrong size. Hmm? No, I'm telling you the truth whether you like it or not. Hmm? You see, we've got a bunch of snotty-nosed kids that aren't thankful for anything. America's been gluttonous for prosperity. And we're about ready to pay the price for it. Hmm? Can I say this? Uh, used to, folks were satisfied having a little piece of land, putting a little garden out back, being able to take care of their needs and, and, and live a life that's a lot slower than what we live today. But now, oh no, we've got to build bigger houses, have better houses, we've got to have better vehicles, got to have this, got to have that. We've just gotten so gluttonous for prosperity. We've sold out our grandchildren to the fifth power. Because it's going to take about six or seven generations from us to pay off the national debt. But we don't care. Because it don't affect us right now. America's gotten gluttonous for pleasures. Hmm. We've gotten to the point where we've got to constantly be entertained. You know why, when I was a kid, you only had three channels, and sometimes if you got, you know, UHF, you, you, you know, Channel 19, and sometimes it came in, you'd have four channels. You know why we were satisfied with that? Because they would all went off at about 1 o'clock in the morning anyway. They played the national anthem, everybody went to bed. Now we got 5,000 channels, and you can stream even more than that, and it goes 24-7, and we still can't find anything to watch. I spend half my time channel surfing. I always end up back on Andy Griffith or, or Everybody Loves Raymond. I've seen every one of them ten times. And they say, you watching that one again? Yep. Why? Because there ain't nothing else on. At least I know there ain't any, any homosexuals on these channels. But we've got to constantly be entertained. We have went sports crazy. 25 years ago, they announced that the most important thing in the world is sports. I thought it was the Lord. And it's filtered in everywhere. Mom and dads think that their kids got to play everything all the time. Hmm? Hey, it does help them. It helps them become well-rounded. It helps them to learn some things about discipline until you tell them how sorry the coach is because the coach don't play you and you're better than the other kid and all that kind of garbage. And, 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 and you know, you, you put all these thoughts in your kid's mind so your kids think uh, 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 they're better than what they are. Yeah, yeah. Can I say? We're killing our kids. We let them play sports year-round and never give a break. You know why baseball takes the whole winter off? Rest their body. You know why football takes all spring and summer off? Rest their bodies. That's why they don't even let them hit in preseason in football anymore. Rest their bodies. Same with basketball. But we got kids playing year-round all the time something and we wonder why they're so stressed out. Because you're putting too much on them. Boy, everybody's on that, aren't they? It is true. 
We've gotten sports crazy in this country. And man, I made, I made something mad here a few years ago when I said I went and watched all the kids play and there's not a pro in the, in the whole church. I made them madder in a wet hen, Phil. You'd have thought I called them, you know, Adolf Hitler's. Uh, but I have. I watched them. Don't have a pro. We got some good kids and they're playing and you support them, but recognize what they are. Quit trying to relive your childhood through them. Mm, see it all the time. And why I'm on that? Miss Cindy, let me talk to you because you're a sweet lady. What is up with these women trying to dress like their teenage daughters? I see it all the time too. It's sickening. Huh? Listen, five pounds of sausage in a one pound bag is not attractive. It's true. Huh? Moms, you're embarrassing your daughters. They don't want you to dress like them. But we've, we've gotten gluttonous for pleasures, for entertainment, for sports, for, for everything. We're just constantly got to have something going on. What's wrong with sitting on the porch and watching the traffic go by? What's wrong with sitting on the couch and holding hands and just enjoying a conversation? What's wrong with having family dinner every now and then? Well, I've made people real mad and I ain't got to the message. America's gotten gluttonous for power. I don't know what in the world has happened in the last five years, six years in America, but people don't care about what is right or wrong people care about them having power when you twist science to prove your point so you can be right you're wrong but we've gotten so gluttonous for power listen I wouldn't, give you a, I wouldn't give you a dime to go up and talk to Bill Clinton. But one thing about when Bill Clinton was in office, he worked with both Democrats and Republicans. He did. He got a lot of legislation passed uh, uh, by working with both of them. We've had uh, uh, presidents and congresses for the last decade or so that won't even look across the aisle. That's not good for America. Listen, uh, America was never to be about a party. America was to be about its citizens. Uh, Amen. We've got these jokers. They go into office and then they come out multi-billionaires. Something's wrong. Hmm? I see where they're going to get Trump's tax statements. What a blessing. Why don't they get Pelosi's? Why don't they get McConnell's? Why don't they get uh, Adam Schiff's? Why don't they get uh, all these guys? Let's look at their tax returns and see all the money they've got. huh? Yeah. See, they don't know what they've opened Pandora's box because by them fighting to get Trump's, we now can get theirs. Uh, I preached a message one time on they got what they wanted, but they lost what they had. Better be careful. America's become gluttonous over privilege. Listen, we don't deserve to get to go to heaven. And whether or not you like this, we don't deserve all the liberties afforded us being Americans. You have them because men died on battlefields. And yet, we think we're owed something. Well, fellas, we all put our pants on the same way, one leg at a time. There isn't nobody that's anything special. We all turn back into dirt when we die. But yet we think we're granted some special privileges. And America's gotten crazy over that. Can I say, never a time in history in America could somebody stood up and said black lives matter or red lives matter or white lives matter and got away with it. Yeah. Now, it's a way of life because we're gluttonous. Now, I remind you what the Bible says that 
The glutton shall come to poverty. This is what I want to give you. I'll be real quick. I've done went longer than I'm going to preach. I want to preach on this thought. Grateful, not glutton. You ought to be grateful, not glutton. You ought to be thankful for anything God's blessed you with. Huh? You didn't deserve it, whatever it is. You ought to be thankful. Brother Bob stood up and said he's thankful God let him get out of bed today. You ought to be thankful. Thankful for every breath. Thankful for everything God has put on your plate, and put around your life. It all came from the hand of God. You ought to be grateful, not a glutton over it. Hmm? Can I say we ought to be grateful, first of all, for the Lord. I am glad I'm born in America because I got to hear about the Lord. You do realize that over two-thirds of the world has never even heard the name Jesus? We ought to be thankful. We've not only heard it, we've got to know Him. He does walk with us and talk with us. Uh, you ought to be thankful you know the Lord. You ought to be thankful you got His Word. Uh, you ought to be thankful you got a church you can come to that still preaches the Word of God, uh, still has some godly singing, doesn't have a rock band, doesn't have fog machines, uh, doesn't have a preacher trying to be hip wearing skinny jeans. Uh, uh, you ought to be thankful. Uh, you still got something that resembles something that's holy. You ought to be thankful for the Lord. We ought to be thankful for life itself. But Jack was thankful God touched him in his cancer. Huh? Listen, I had cancer. Miss Brandy had cancer. Uh, Miss Crystal had cancer. Uh, but we don't have cancer. Uh, you ought to be thankful you got life. Uh, might not have been cancer. You might have had COVID. Uh, uh, you might have had an upper respiratory infection or bronchitis. Uh, hey, you made it to church and somebody didn't kill you in a roundabout. You ought to be thankful. You ought to be thankful for life. Mm, what a blessing to be alive. I don't fear death. I'm going to heaven. Mm, I'm ready to go, but I didn't sign up to go today. I do enjoy life. You ought to be thankful for life. David said it, that those in the grave cannot really, they cannot praise the Lord. And when you're dead, you can't live for God anymore. You're with Him. But while you have life, you can impact somebody else's life for the Lord. You ought to be thankful for life. Can I say this? We ought to be grateful for our loved ones. Hmm? Listen, I, I'm, I'm glad I was born in the family I was born in. There's some of my family I didn't particularly care for at the time. Been a couple that had spats with over the years. There's one... Miss Lynn's favorite nephew ought to probably ought to rethink the, the day he swung a ball bat at me, but that's a whole other story. Huh? But I'm glad for my family. Aren't you glad for your family? I'm glad for my wife and my children. I'm glad that I don't have to worry when it's church time where they are. Hmm? Huh? Over there working with them kids right now. What a blessing. Have your family. You ought to be thankful for your family. Huh? Your loved ones. You ought to be thankful to those extended loved ones. You're going to get to see maybe tomorrow or this weekend. You ought to be thankful for that. There's some folks who don't have a family. A lot of lonely people this time of year. Don't have somebody to have a meal with. Huh? You ought to be thankful. You got family. You got loved ones. You got friends that you can spend time with. Hmm? You ought to be thankful for your loved ones. Huh? You say, Preacher, I got something to get on my nerves. So do I. Say, so what do you do with it? I thank God for them and I pray for them, but I don't hang around them. Brother Ray, I'm not going to go hang out with somebody that's going to put me in a bad spirit. Amen. I'd rather hang out with y'all. Yeah. Hmm. Huh? Josh, Josh got a nephew I don't want to hang out with. I don't care how many times he says he's been saved. He just figured out who it was. I'm just trying to say you ought to be thankful for your loved ones you ought to be thankful for your church family you know what a privilege it is to have church family now I know a lot of people go to church they don't have a church family hmm. what a blessing to know that if I got a call to prayer chain folks are going to be praying what a blessing to know that if you got a problem you got folks in here that's going to help lift you up going to try and help you 
That's a blessing. Huh? How many have come from a church family where they were just people went to church with? Yeah, we all have. But isn't it a blessing to be in a church where you enjoy getting to see them and hanging out with them? You know what blesses me as a pastor is how many of you that hang out with one another outside of church? That's a blessing. That's the way it ought to be. We've got something to be grateful for. We ought to be grateful for our liberty. Ever since George W. Bush was in office and he proclaimed the Patriot Act, our liberties have been taken away little bit by little bit by little bit by little bit by little bit. But we still have liberty where we can come out and worship. We still have liberty if you want to go somewhere in this country, you can go. We still have liberty that you can voice and express your First Amendment rights and express your opinion. Still have liberty to witness and tell folks about Jesus and pass out tracts. You know, they can't do that in China. Can't do that in Russia. Can't do that in North Korea. Get your head chopped off. Uh, we have liberty. I'd be grateful. And I thought about this, and Miss Marcy said it in her testimony. I'd be grateful for the little things. Yeah, hallelujah for the big things. But what about the little things? Every day God does something for you. Mm -hmm. every day he's watching out for you every day something that if you're not paying attention you'll let it go by but God didn't the little things mm -hmm. you know the Bible says the little foxes that spoil the vines but it's also the little things that will propel you into being a great Christian when you take time to stop and smell the roses look at the little things that God does for you because when you get to looking at the little things, they turn out to be big things. Hmm? He can do one big thing for you or a thousand little things. A thousand little things end up outweighing the one big thing. You ought to thank God for the little things. You know, most of you know, back on October 30th on his way to church, Naj wrecked a car. Well, today I saw that car. It's amazing. He walked away from it. I don't know how the airbags didn't come out. It was a Toyota, so it was probably defaulted anyway. Another one. <clears throat> Good cars, rust a lot. But anyway, <clears throat> if you just saw the car, and I got pictures of it, if you saw it, it's amazing. Walked away. Just a little thing for God, but it's a big thing for us. Can you imagine calling his parents and saying, We got some bad news? I sent his dad a picture today. You know what his dad was thankful for? That Naren was in, in the island and not here because it got wrecked on the passenger side. And he told Naren, he said, Naren, if you'd been there, it might have been the end. Just something little for God. But see, we take grant. See, I, I knew he was in a fender bender. I had no idea how bad it was. Just the little things we need to be thankful for and grateful for. I'm glad he neither slumbers nor sleeps. You know, that's just a little verse in the Bible. But it plays out big in our life. Just little things. You ought to be thankful for the little things. So my charge to you, I know you're going to be meeting with loved ones and maybe some of them aren't in church. Show them the goodness of God. Be kind to them. Be compassionate to them. But my real charge to you is don't be gluttonous. Don't take for granted all the goodness of God. Just be grateful. You know, if we would learn to be thankful, and I said this several years ago, if we would truly learn to be thankful, we'd have revival. If we would truly thank God every day for his goodness and all that he does for us, revival would break out in our hearts. Did you see, Brother Bob, we breathe so much. We take for granted that our lungs are going to breathe. Hmm? We've gotten used to our heart beating so much, we just take for granted it's going to keep beating. Hmm? Hmm? be a lot better to be grateful than be gluttonous, greedy, take for granted. Strive to be grateful. Listen, I know this. As a parent, 
when my kids came unrehearsed and came and showed me appreciation, it caused me to want to do a whole lot more for them. And I really believe that if we showed the Lord true gratitude, He'd want to dump a whole lot more on us. So I wonder, will we be grateful or gluttonous? Because we can take for granted the things of God, and then God will say, you know what? You're not worthy of them no more. And he'd take them away. I believe the only reason America still floats is because there's still godly people in this world that are serving God and grateful and trying to win other people to God. If it wasn't for that, God cut America off right now. We're living in the blessings of folks who are spiritual. God help us to be grateful. All right, I'm done. Brother Clint, come pick out something on your guitar. Maybe you want to come and thank the Lord. Just tell him, thank you, Lord, for being so good to me. Maybe you want to come and ask him for some help in an area in your life. Maybe you need to come pray for the preacher. They won't be so mean. I don't know. But I know one thing. The Lord is worthy of our praise. And he's worthy of our gratitude. And folks are coming. And Brother Clint's getting out his guitar. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we sure do bless you. We are thankful, Lord. We're born in America. Thankful for the gospel. Thankful for our church. Thankful for the shed blood of Calvary. Thankful for the Word of God. We still have it. Thankful, Lord, that we can come out on a cool Wednesday night and hear great testimonies of how you bless and help people in their lives. Thankful for the breath that we have in our body. Lord, just uh, our health and, Lord, our families. And Lord, thank you for your long-suffering and your patience towards us. Lord, we're just so thankful for all the choice blessings of heaven. Lord, we're unworthy of them, but we are grateful. We pray you'd bless these thy people. Lord, help us all to be mindful of the goodness of God in our lives. Lord, send revival these days. Help us to see sinners saved. And help us see Jesus heralded once again in America. Have your will and way now. Speak to hearts in Jesus' name. Thanks to listeners like you, IBC has had over 100,000 views on our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.